Fano, we saw it. We sat courtside. We watched UConn put a 30 to nothing run on Illinois. Um, I haven't had a chance to really talk to you about this since it happened. You, uh, he, he ditched us, T.O. He was going to be on the show on Saturday, and he decided it's much more important for me to go spend Easter with my family than hang out with Jeff Goodman and Rob Doster until 1 o'clock in the morning at TD Garden Arena in Boston. Two straight nights. Unbelievable Fanta. Unbelievable. No, it's uh, I'm, I'm kidding. Um, Let's talk about UConn. Let's talk about that run. Let's talk about uh, what they did to Illinois. Let's talk about that performance because uh, I can't remember. Um, I was going to say I can't remember a more dominant performance from a big yeah. guy. Um, But, I mean, Zach Eady did it offensively. Donovan Klingon did it defensively. Right. It look, you have two forces of nature coming. Are they going to meet in the final four? Who knows? We'll see. Talk about UConn, Fanta. Well, they are inching closer to being in the ranks of the greatest teams of all time. Yeah. Because when you're winning your NCAA tournament games by an average of 28 points, and you've been up by at least 30 in each of these games, they're not, they're playing a different sport. Uh, they're playing a different sport. The, the take last week about the fact that they could, you know, compete in the NBA or whatnot, that was that was off base and, and ridiculous. However, mm -hmm. however, uh, they they are not an NBA team, but they play like a semi pro team. Um, they 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 are they're otherworldly in how they play. I mean, they're they're when everybody's zigging, they're zagging. They went on a thirty to nothing run in the in the game, and in the twenty five zero run out of the out of the second half to start the second half they hit one three-pointer mm -hmm. one yeah. like they're not hitting three or four threes to then get on this run you know you think when a team goes on a big run they get hot from downtown that was really right that's not what happened they no. just they dominated a big 10 team physically they attacked the basket at will they suck the will out of a team that was on a mission and had the hottest scoring player in the tournament. Do you know how much that takes to make a team submit? To to literally stranglehold a team and get them to bow out by submission. That's what happened on Saturday night. Yeah. Illinois called not one, but two timeouts in 90 seconds. And then when UConn's run kept going in the next 90 seconds, you could feel on the other side this sense of defeat. Tristan Newton did not make a shot. Stefan Castle made one. How did they win by 25? They won by 25 because they're big man. You can talk about players who might have had a better season. And, and, uh, and Zach Eady fits both of these, what I'm about to say. You could talk about a player who, who scores the ball more explosively. You could talk about a player who's been more consistent from game to game. But you cannot speak about value and not acknowledge the value of Donovan Klingon to this yep. UConn team because mm -hmm. defensively he is a menace. He is an elite rim protector. That's how he's going to get paid. And guys, I thought on Saturday he showed his wide array of what he can be on the offensive end of the floor. That was extremely impressive. And absolutely, it feels like going to Phoenix. This is UConn's to lose. Guys, it, it, we've said that, Rob, I think you said this last time. What was it? Death by a thousand cuts. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's incredible watching this team play. It, and their offense is so long-winded. Like, they'll run some plays yeah. that, by the nature of their design, is goes to the third side of the offense. And they just end up with an open shot. It, it's it's unbelievable. They're Defensively, they're nuts good. And then on top of that, when you have two guards that shoot the percentages that they do, you have to take care of them. And even when they're not shooting, they still command that type of gravity. So it's like Samson Johnson came in, gave good minutes. Like it, it's their competitive nature, their will, uh, Caravan knocking down shots and making things happen. I, I think what's crazy for me about Caravan is like not a great athlete, but I'm relatively speaking guys before UConn fans jump down my throat relatively speaking not a terrific athlete but like it just does all the right things and th that could be said for a 
several of their players. And then you add in elite athleticism with Johnson. And I would consider Kling an elite athlete for his size. And then it, like, it's unbelievable what they were able to do. They just beat them badly. They just yeah. beat them like one thing after another. They, they threw an extra body. They recover so quickly. They know their rotations better than anybody else. Um, uh, they're lovable maniacs, every one of them. Like Dan Hurley's a maniac. I love Dan Hurley. Uh, the same with uh, Cam Spencer. Like it's it's unbelievable. Well, did you guys see Caravan talking about how Cam Spencer won't go in their room without yelling yes. at him? Yeah, I was right there. We were like when when that. I think was it you that asked him the question, Fanta? I think it was you that asked him that question. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, like that is. Unbelievable. And you, you want to talk about a playing for a coach that's a mirror image of you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> or, or coaching a guy who's a mirror image of you? My God. I mean, here's, here's if, they they go through and, if they go through and they win this, I, I would consider them a top. They got to be a top five or ten team of all time. It Well, it's hard to do that because you, you can't really compare eras, right? Like if you look at – No, one, but I mean they're sheer – they're winning games in the tournament yeah. by 20, over 28 points a game. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, well, what else can they do to, to be in that conversation? If yeah, you're, no, you're no, going to no, say no. then you're a hater of the old, or then you're no, a hater no, of the new style of basketball. When, yeah, when you compare comparatively to what they are playing against, is like they're as dominant as any team that we've seen in this lot, like this last two year run, as any team ever. But I, I just don't think it's fair to compare a team that had um, like Rip Hamilton junior year uh, to a team that has like Cam Spencer. Oh, so it's uh yeah, th there's a reason why I mentioned him to you. Um, I just it's it's very like the uh the 2004 team that won the title had junior year Mecca Okafor who was the number two pick and junior year Ben Gordon who was the number three pick. And comparing like you just can't, I don't think you can compare across eras like that. You can compare how Tom they anyway. I think what makes them so good is that they are the only team in the country that has five and maybe six guys that can go out and win you a game. If you want to throw a Sandiar into that conversation, um. When Steph Castle is your fifth best starter, right? And he's a guy who in the Robert Sweet 16 can go get you 14 points, five boards, four assists, who doesn't give a shit about scoring, who is perfectly happy being the guy who is solely tasked with stopping Terrence Shannon defensively. When that is your fifth best player, like you, what are we even talking about here, right? Like compare that to what Purdue has where Trey Kaufman ran or Mason Gillis is is the number five guy in your roster. Compare that to Illinois, who basically has three starters and the two guys that are just kind of there to do a job, right? Ty Rogers starts for them. Luke Goody plays a lot of minutes for them. All due respect to those guys, they're great role players, but they can't win you a game. UConn's got five dudes that can go out there and win you a game with and it, with different jobs and different roles, and I, I just I don't know what you do with that, right? Like so Ty Rogers, they were just sitting in the lane. Yes. Yeah, they so like here, here's the thing. Like here's ahead, the dude. thing with no, no. Just here's here's the thing with UConn is that, um, if you what do you try to take away first? You know, when you are when you're going up, let's just talk about Illinois, right? When you're going up in Illinois against Illinois, it's, all right. We have to make it difficult for Terrence Shannon. We can't let him get downhill, and when he does, we have to make sure that we have help at the rim, right? Mm -hmm. That's basically your game plan for Illinois. And then you say, we got to have an extra body to throw out Marcus Domask if one of our guards can't handle him in the post. And then you just kind of have to keep somebody on Coleman Hawkins. Don't let him get going. And then beyond that, it's like, don't help off of Luke Goody, help off of Ty Rogers. Like you basically have three guys you have to game plan for. When it comes to UConn, you can try to take away Donovan Kling, but then that's going to leave somebody open. You can try to take away Tristan Newton. It's going to leave somebody open. You can try to take away Cam Spencer. It's going to leave somebody open. You can try to take away the stuff that they run. They have so many counters. It may not matter. Um, I, I just I don't know what you do to try to stop them. You know, it, there's there's always going to be a weapon that you're going to have to – you're going to have to leave somebody open more or less, right? You're going to have to let them have something, and they have five different guys that can beat you. It's just I, I don't know what you do. What do you, Like, T.O., what do you do with that? I don't know what you do. You just hope you're disciplined enough to stay in front when you play against those guys. You're disciplined enough to stay in front, and you hope you have one matchup that you can just milk and force rotation. Mm -hmm. that, that That's what you hope you do. And, guys, I'm going to say it again, but Alabama fans have been crushing me. By the way, they give Providence fans a run for their money just as far as spite. Now, their arguments are pretty stupid.
truth, be honest with you. They at least they don't even come at you with logic. You're, like, you're stupid. I'm like, dude, I don't. Hey, you're terrible at your job. I'm like, hey, dude, man, I don't come to your fucking work and throw rocks at you while you're mowing. You prick. <laughs> I don't say all that shit. But but here's the thing too, like uh, <laughs> <laughs> like Providence fans at least come back at with you with some kind of like respectful banter. Like not even respectful. It's not respectful at all. But like at least Good basketball banter. banter. Alabama Good fans don't know what they're talking about, so they just call you stupid. So anyway, oh, but but here's the thing, like uh I the only team that I think has kind of like that kingpin to where it would force rotations is Purdue. And if you're able to see them uh go in the finals, I think you're gonna see the best two teams in college basketball, which is what we always want the, in the in the national championship game. Great runs by Alabama, happy for Nate Oates, great run by NC State, happy for Kevin Keats. But you hope that you get the best two teams. And by and large, all season long, it's been Purdue and it's been UConn. And I think it's everybody else. And it's been that way all year long. 